Aside from Jabba himself, the Rancor is probably the most memorable thing to come out of the Jabba's Palace sequence of Return of the Jedi. And that's why I've decided to devote most of the month of May to making videos about the Rancor and Rancor-related products, toys, merchandise, statues, what have you. Everything that I have in my collection I'm going to try and show off during the month of May. In this first video in the series, we're going to be talking about just three and three quarter inch scale Rancor action figures. There have, of course, been action figures or toys made for the Rancor in other sizes, but we'll cover those later on. So without any further ado, let's travel back in time to 1983 and take a look at the first Rancor toy ever released from Kenner, the Rancor Monster action figure. The Rancor monster's hungry again. Let's feed him. Don't do it. Luke Skywalker, Gamorrean Guard, new Rancor monster and Rancor Keeper action figures, each sold separately. You'll regret this. <laughs> Willie gets his claws into a Jedi Knight. Whoa, some jaws. This is my only chance. <laughs> He's wounded. We better get in there. <laughs> He'll never get out alive, Gamorrean Guard. New Rancor monster. Action figures, each sold separately. From Kenner's Star Wars Return of the Jedi Collection. So here we have the box for the Vintage Kenner Rancor Monster figure, and it's a fairly hefty one as these things go. On the front we see this scene of the Rancor battling both the Gamorrean Guard and Luke Skywalker. And if we turn it around we can see the main features of the toy on the side here. It says, open Rancor Monster jaw by pushing the lever on his back, and Rancor Monster has movable legs. Wow. Spread spring-loaded arms and watch them snap back into position. We'll test that one later. And Rancor Monster even has movable wrists. On the back, there's just the same scene as on the front. And on the top, we have a little bit of a different take on that scene as well, which is kind of cool. And uh, basically the same thing on the bottom. So let's go ahead and take a look at the toy itself. One interesting thing about the toy is that it has essentially no paint on it at all, except for his teeth and a little bit on his eyes. It's all just molded brown plastic. But I actually think that works really well. There's a lot of detail on the body here that's been sculpted in, like the wrinkles and whatnot. And I don't really think you could improve it much using paint. In fact, it might actually end up looking worse, especially given the technology that was available to them at the time. I do think the face is a little bit off looking compared to the actual Rancor, maybe just because of the number of teeth that they've given him, but also the face in general seems maybe a little small somehow. Other than that though, it's a really cool looking figure. And they also managed to include a pretty cool action feature as you saw on the back of the box. This lever here causes his jaw to open and close, which is perfect if you want to recreate some of the main scenes from the movie, such as him chowing down on a Gamorrean guard. Now the mouth doesn't open quite big enough for him to actually fit it in his mouth, but you can at least get the head in, which is good enough, I guess. The arms move up and down, and they're connected in between them with an elastic band that makes them spring back if you open them wide like that, as they mentioned on the back of the box. And yes, his wrists do move 360 degrees there, which is actually kind of a handy feature because it allows you to easily put action figures in his hands. You can fit uh, one in each hand, actually. In Europe, the toy was released by Palatoy, and they used a longer and thinner box like the one you see here, although the toy itself was the same as far as I know. I don't have one of these in my collection yet. I've been on the lookout for one for a while, though. A lot of people, myself included, have some pretty fond memories of this figure. And it's a good thing it turned out so well, because we'd have to wait another 15 years for another Rancor figure to be released. In 1998, Kenner released the Rancor and Luke Skywalker set in their Power of the Force line. This featured an all-new sculpt and real feel skin, which Kenner was strangely proud of on many of its toys. Honestly, it just sort of feels like rubber, which isn't surprising because that's exactly what it is. Well, vinyl, anyway. If we turn the package around, we can see on the side they have Luke being held by the Rancor, and the back is kind of busy in the way that a lot of the Power of the Force 2 toys were at the time. They have a little uh, card you can cut out with some vital statistics about the Rancor, as well as some other figures and toys in the line. So let's go ahead and uh, look at the actual toy itself. 
Like the vintage toy, it's cast in brown plastic, but they've added some extra details in the form of airbrushed lines in various places, as well as extra paint on the teeth, eyes, and claws. I'm not entirely convinced that the airbrushing was the way to go. It looks pretty good on the face, but on the rest of the body, it just ends up giving him a striped look, which really doesn't fit the character very well, in my opinion. The face, by the way, seems a lot bigger than on the vintage figure. Maybe a little too big, actually. On the bright side, they added details like his earring and the manacle on one of his arms there, which is a nice touch. Instead of having an opening mouth, as on the vintage figure, they've made it out of this soft plastic, but kept it in a permanently open position. That does allow you to sort of squeeze in an action figure, though, so you can actually get a fair amount of the upper body of a Gamorrean guard in there, if you really want to. In fact, I think we can get him in there even farther. There we go. In terms of his construction, he's very similar to the vintage toy. The arms move up and down and turn around at the wrists in the same way. And the legs also move, although just like the vintage figure, they're kind of sculpted in one position, so that doesn't do a lot of good, really. I had a lot of difficulty getting him to stand upright on his own. I don't know if it's just my figure, maybe it's getting old and the joints are loose, but I had to resort to putting some tape underneath his feet just to get him to stand up. Otherwise, he kind of defaults to a uh, forward-leaning pose, which you'll see right here. I sort of have to put his hands touching the ground for him to be stable, and interestingly, that's the way they have him in the box. I really don't think this is a bad sculpt at all, but they were so heavy-handed with some of the detailing here that it kind of looks amateuristic and ends up ruining what's otherwise a pretty good toy. As you may be able to tell, this is not my favorite figure, mostly because it came out after I had already grown up and was no longer really that interested in Star Wars toys, so I don't have any feelings of nostalgia about it, but I do think if you were to repaint this well, it might actually look pretty decent. The next and final entry in our video today will be the Jabba's Rancor set from 2008. This was a Target exclusive, as you see here. And I think just by looking at it, you can tell that there's quite a difference between this and the toys that preceded it. It's quite a large toy, so it comes in a big box with a kind of Rancor pit theme to it. And on the back we have a nice little scene here that they've recreated for us. Featuring Rancor Grip! This originally retailed for $40, I believe, although I think they raised it to $50, which is a little hard to believe given how much even a single figure now costs these days. It's worth pointing out that this is actually a repaint or a repack of the Battle Rancor figure that they released for the Force Unleashed video game that was also a Target exclusive in 2007, I believe. And, uh, you know, they basically just retrofitted it to be Jabba's Rancor, but I imagine they had that in mind all along. The first thing you notice when you get it out of the box is just how big it is, especially if you turn it to its side. It really does use up a lot of space with its giant arms there. The arms appear to be spring-loaded, so if you bring them up, they kind of spring downward like that. I'm not entirely sure what the purpose of that is, but it, I guess it's a kind of action feature. The wrists, of course, do turn. He's got a cut bicep there, so you can make his arms spread wide. His legs go up and down, and he's got a ball-jointed ankle as well as another joint there. So there's a lot of articulation on this thing, including a head that can turn around, and we'll take a look at the jaw in a second. But some of this, I do kind of wonder if it's actually necessary. Still, uh, he does have some cool features like this real metal earring here. And uh, he's got a real manacle that goes around his wrist as a separate piece, and then some metal chain there. So there's a lot of uh, attention to detail here, I think. The paint is on the sloppy side, and it's also quite a bit too dark, in my opinion. It should be more of a reddish-brown color. But the sculpt is really nice. His mouth does open, although it's not an automatic thing, like with the vintage figure. Still, it opens quite wide, and you can fit a uh, Gamorrean guard in there fairly deeply if you so desire. Let's give that a shot. There we go. The Rancor grip feature that they were talking about on the box refers to this hand here, 
Uh, this one on the other side is sort of permanently in this pose, but you can take this one, which has some wires in it, and actually repose the fingers, which is nice. It allows you to wrap them around a figure if you so desire. Now, if you compare this loose one with the one that I have in the package, you'll notice that the paint jobs are fairly different. The one on the right here is lighter and seems to have some more dry brushing than the one on the left. I think that's because the one on the left is actually from a later release. They re-released this figure as part of the Jabba's Rancor Pit set in 2015. This was a Toys R Us exclusive, and I did a whole video about that a few years ago. If you want to see it, uh, go ahead and check that out. But uh, it's a great set, incidentally. Very large, though, in box, as you can probably tell here. So, what's my conclusion about these three guys? My personal favorite is going to be the uh, Kenner vintage version here, of course. I just have a lot of affection for the vintage line. And for my more modern figures, I would choose the one on the right, and that kind of leaves the Power of the Force version there on the left as the odd man out. What are your thoughts? Which of these is your favorite? Anyway, I hope you will stick around for the rest of this month's videos about the Rancor, and uh, I'll see you again very soon. This video was brought to you with the help of my patrons on Patreon, including these Palace VIPs and Angelica Brady. You can support me for as little as $1 a month, and in return you get some cool perks, like early videos, behind-the-scenes posts, and more. See the link in the video description for more information. Thanks for watching!